Welcome, everyone. My name is Axel Threlfall. I'm editor-at-large at Reuters based out of London. Uh, I'm thrilled to be back hosting for the uh, Horasis Global Forum. This session is uh, entitled The Future of Europe. It's a, it's a big, uh, bold, broad title, to say the least, but one that uh, uh, will allow us to explore uh, uh, many uh, important issues. A, a search for cohesion, solidarity, trust, shared identity, all of these are the light motifs, if you like, uh, of uh, any discussion of Europe's future and its efforts to navigate uh, these testing uh, times. We hear a lot about um, drawing hope from despair in this current context, finding opportunity uh, in crisis. And indeed, the pandemic has been a, a catalyst for consensus among some EU members on the budget on climate, uh, for example. Um, how does this look to uh, EU members? How does it uh, look to those nations still awaiting EU integration? We'll find out in just a moment. I'm delighted to welcome uh, two ministers uh, from the Balkans. I think we've got one with us now and one joining shortly. Uh, Edward Schalzi is Minister of State for the Protection of Entrepreneurship in Albania. Uh, Adrian Oros, uh, who hopefully will join shortly as Minister of Agriculture in Romania. Romania, of course, has been an EU uh, member since 07. Albania is on the accession path, uh, along with several of its neighbours. Uh, it's a long, complex uh, process that has uh, prompted uh, many claims recently of disarray uh, in the accession strategy. We will hear shortly from uh, from Chelsea uh, what he thinks. So welcome, uh, Edward. Uh, you're, you're here for now, and, and we'll come to you in just a second. Before I do that, though, um, I want to introduce three very short um, pre-recorded messages from three ministers who can't join us live. Julia Klöckner, Germany's Minister of Food and Agriculture, uh, Carmelo Abella, Minister within the Office of the Prime Minister of Malta, and Jenny Gulruth, Scotland's Minister for Europe and International Development. If you could just mute your mics just for a few minutes, hear from these three, and then we will come to you. Let's go. mitigate climate change because climate change deprives agriculture of the basis it needs to fulfill its main task feeding people therefore it is important that you as members of the global horasis community are addressing this important topic because climate change knows no borders we have to work hand in hand and to find solutions because we have a shared responsibility in late may Finnish researchers published a study we should take note of. According to the study, around one third of the agricultural land worldwide will no longer be suitable for agricultural production in 2090. If we do not succeed in stopping climate change, because extreme weather conditions, droughts and flooding destroy harvests, there are already many victims. The World Food Programme's recent report on the cost of a plate of food illustrates this. The report shows where, relative to income, the price of a simple plate of food is the highest. For this first time, this list includes Burkina Faso, because the increasing violence and the impact of climate change are leading to hunger in this country. The number of people suffering from hunger in Burkina Faso has tripled to 3.4 million. This is a terrible development, which is uh, fueled by climate change. We must respond. We must make the agricultural sector fit for the current challenges. We must ensure that food can still be produced despite climate change. For example, through more research into plants which are better adapted to the new climate conditions. At the same time, agriculture must help to mitigate climate change by reducing emissions and increasing carbon storage wherever possible. In Germany, we have already put in place a great number of measures. With the new common agricultural policy, we are supporting the important goals that the European Union has set out in the Green Deal. We have just adapted our own National Climate Change Act to make its goals more ambitious and to provide solutions. 
we are devoting funds to this area. We have, for example, provided 1 billion euros to support our farmers so they can invest in new technologies and digitalization. We have also funded many other programs, for example, to promote research, invest in our forests or protect more land, because we also want to make the German agricultural sector more efficient and resource conserving. We want to be a global trailblazer. We want to lead the way because we believe that it is possible to do both, reduce emissions and produce sufficient food. I now wish you an interesting discussion. And maybe you choose to focus on using and activating your network to find solutions which will help the international community and all of us to make progress. And I want to thank you very much. Take care and stay healthy. As we all know, the motto United in Diversity is the slogan that we as a union of countries have chosen to represent our shared philosophy. It signifies how Europeans have come together in the form of the European Union to work for peace and prosperity, while at the same time being enriched by the continent's many different cultures, traditions and languages. We are also united in our values, apart from sharing the European geographical area and centuries of history together. If one were to ask what makes you European, I would say our values, our pursuit for cohesion and solidarity, and our way of life, including the social dimension, the very concept of leaving nobody behind. In terms of bringing together different ideas, we have working institutions. They do not have an easy job, but they do serve their functions set out by the different treaties. The EU thrives on compromise after having had extensive discussions. Compromise is not necessarily the best solution, but it is also not the lowest denominator. It represents the best possible solution at the time, considering the various issues raised through the discussions. We are at a juncture where our resilience has been put to the test in an unprecedented way. Many lessons are being learned, particularly the importance of being better prepared for the future. The Portuguese presidency's priorities focus on recovery by leveraging the green and digital transitions, the implementation of the social pillar and strengthening Europe's open strategic autonomy. To this effect, our leaders held a very important discussion at the Porto Summit a few weeks ago, a discussion which was accompanied by a declaration outlining our commitments and promoting social cohesion and prosperity in the European Union. Also, looking beyond the COVID-19 pandemic, which had its toll on all of our countries. I believe that Europe's success will be measured by our ability to put citizens' well-being at the center of our work by making Europe the most attractive place to work and to live in. This can be the best possible way of promoting European values around the globe in the post-COVID context. The citizen-led conference on the future of Europe is therefore an opportunity for an open, inclusive and transparent debate with citizens concerning a number of key priorities and challenges. This needs to be seen against the current backdrop, whereby the post-World War II order is increasingly being challenged, as we might be heading towards a new, yet unknown order. Geopolitical rivalries are intensifying, as are technological competition and challenges 
to political and fundamental values. In seeking to position the European Union as a responsible global leader, we are also seeking to define in concrete terms the concept of open strategic autonomy. And this very much depends on resilience and being free and able to act. It is about addressing our vulnerabilities and building the necessary capacity while remaining open and shying away from protectionist tendencies. In Malta's view, the list of how this can be achieved can be quite lengthy. So I will limit myself to mentioning just a few. These include multilateralism and rule-based international cooperation, particularly in the role of the United Nations, building mutually beneficial strategic partnerships where we see the need for focus and credibility in our neighborhood, particularly towards the South and particularly the, the African continent. Global leadership in fighting climate change and preparing for the future migratory challenge. Important tools such as remaining a key standard setter through our regulatory power. Connectivity within the EU and with our strategic partners, as well as enhancing the role of the euro, are amongst the areas where we can continue to develop leadership. Thank you for your attention. Hello to the panel and to those watching. I'm sorry I can't be with you for the full event today, but I'm really glad to have this opportunity to address you ahead of what I'm sure will be an interesting and thought-provoking panel. As you may know, Scotland recently went to the polls and I'm thrilled to have been returned to government, taking up an enhanced brief as Minister for Culture, Youth and International Development. And we certainly have our work cut out for us. We are facing the joint challenges of a global pandemic and recovery from it, the ongoing problems posed by Brexit and the urgent pressing need to take forward our net zero agenda as part of the global effort to secure a greener future. But these challenges mean we have a chance, an obligation, to shape Scotland permanently for the better, creating a healthier, happier, fairer and more sustainable country for everyone who calls Scotland home, establishing a positive legacy for future generations. At the absolute heart of this future Scotland is our place in Europe. In their consistent opposition to Brexit, the people of Scotland have shown how much they value our close relationship with friends and partners across the continent. Indeed, none of the challenges we face respect borders or political views. The impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, in conjunction with the many other global challenges we face, demand collective and cooperative actions. What we do now, in this period of undeniable upheaval, will be crucial for setting the agenda for a future, more prosperous Europe. However, the question of the existence of a European identity is a challenging one. And whilst it's hard to speak to it more generally, what I can say is that with confidence, following the experience of 2020, the Scottish Government is more committed than ever to the kind of outward-looking, cooperative, internationalist model represented by the European Union. Ultimately, the founding values of the EU human dignity, freedom, democracy, equality, the rule of law and respect for human rights are Scotland's values. They, more than anything else, should be what guides our decisions and informs how we can create a better future. While Scotland may be a nation on the geographical periphery of Europe, our population has been shaped by centuries of migration from all over the continent. And freedom of movement across the EU undoubtedly has a positive impact on Scotland. We believe that migration strengthens society and that Scotland benefits from the skills, experience and expertise of people who choose to live, work, study and raise their families in Scotland. And we must therefore, as leaders, ensure that our countries remain open and inclusive, welcoming trade and welcoming people into our communities. So many of those who've cared for us during the pandemic were not born in Scotland, but they have chosen to make here their home. It saddens me when I continue to hear politicians around the world failing to recognise how greatly enriched we are by migration, or who present it as a fundamental threat. And this year in particular must also be the year we as leaders take responsibility and serious action towards our net zero agenda. 
In Scotland, we look forward to welcoming the world to Glasgow for the upcoming COP26. For us, COP26 is an opportunity to demonstrate and accelerate further the world-leading climate action we are taking, which includes the world's most ambitious legislative framework for emissions reduction. And let me assure you that we know what an absolutely pivotal moment this is for the entire world. It's an opportunity for unity, solidarity and boldness that must be seized. Europe's role in this global fight cannot be underestimated and Scotland will remain a committed partner that continues engaging with the EU to ensure ambitious and cooperative action. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, so three messages there, Malta, Germany uh, and Scotland. L lots of uh, different um, pieces to talk about. Um, uh, Minister Oros, I, I want to uh, welcome you now as well. Uh, Minister Oros is uh, the Romanian uh, Minister uh, of Agriculture. Of course, Edward Schalzi uh, is with us from Albania. As well. And, and uh, Minister Schalzi, I know your time is tight. So let me kick it off uh, with you with a few big picture questions related to your country. Lots of messages there of unity, of hope, of coordination, of solidarity, et cetera, et cetera. How, how, how difficult is that to hear, uh, given the, the neglect, some would say, a lot of uh, Albanians feel, uh, you know, given the, uh, the, 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 this complex um, process uh, of, Well, thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great pleasure that uh, I'm attending uh, alongside with uh, honorable uh, participants. I was very young back in 1991 as a student when we raised and overthrown the old system. As you may know, Albania has suffered for 45 years under a very harsh dictatorship. Many restrictions and, you know, the slogans at those days, 30 years ago, was, we want Albania like Europe. People were calling and saying again and again and again, so it was our dream to be like Europe. We were physically, but not spiritually, mentally, culturally, and we didn't share the same uh, challenges. Mm. But when we look back, 30 years have passed. As you may realize, a country which is uh, coming out uh, 45 years of dictatorship has a lot uh, of challenges. We facing consolidating democracies now having their own problems on, on governing the countries. Imagine like Albania. So during all these years, different reforms, having in mind all the time Europe and uh, you know, during the difficulties of uh, integration and globalization, recently were amplified by the pandemic, which challenged the countries mm. regardless how big they were, how developed they were. So it showed the weaknesses of the institutions and at the beginning, a lack of cooperation. Yeah. So we had the values on one side binding together while on the practice we saw countries moving on very different directions. Mm -hmm. And it didn't show at the beginning the cohesion. My, my question, Minister, if I could interrupt, my, my, yeah. my, my question to you on, on the back of what you've just said, um, your, your bid was blocked, your, the accession bid in 2019 by a French president who believed that reform, he said, was more important than enlargement. Do you think, do you think that focus on reform is misplaced? As a matter of fact, the European Commission has 
agreed with us on an agenda of reforms. And we are monitored every, every three months, six months. There is a yearly report showing the progress in Albania. If you see the papers and the documents, you realize that we have fulfilled our responsibilities and our duties. When it comes to the decision, we see the politics interfering. And many times, uh, as we have seen, uh, the internal politics of these countries has blocked the accession. Mm. It was not that Albania has not done uh, or fulfilled the responsibilities. We've shown that we're fighting and we're struggling to meet the standards. And we have reports, we have documents which tells that the things that we <clears throat> undertook are already done. But the, we don't. I don't want to talk only about Albania, but I also want to talk about the region as a whole. Yeah. Because we don't see uh, Albania separated from the Balkan countries. If we will join Europe, we have to join Europe together. We've started uh, like never before a communication with our neighbors. We are fighting to settle down the differences, well-known differences. You know, uh, imagine now the Prime Minister of Albania set foot on Serbia on the first visit after 60 years. So we're breaking some barriers. We're doing our utmost, uh, but not insisting that Albania will uh, have to join. But the reason the region has to join. And we need now you know, a Europe which was in our dreams. We've, we, 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 we brought up dreaming about Europe. Now that we are free, we cannot. Okay, okay. Again, again, Minister, apologies to interrupt. I know you have to leave shortly, but just, just in conclusion from you, and then uh, Minister Oras, I'll, I'll, I'll bring the conversation to you. You're, you're saying Albania is ready, but more importantly, this is a group of nations that needs to work together. What are, what are the latest signals you're getting from the Commission now uh, on, on your accession? What, 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 what is the latest correspondence that you've had with them relating specifically to Albania? As a matter of fact, when it comes to personal relations or individual relations, they all agree that you merit to be in Europe. Now the European Commission is always presenting uh, proposals for reforming the process. Reforming the process must be in close cooperation with uh, our countries. And you know, in the, in, in, the, in the last days, we have taken uh, very positive signals. Uh, mm. Our Prime Minister is having a tour in Europe uh, that uh, the opinion will be the real one this time and not affected by internal politics of uh, different European okay. countries. Okay. So, yeah. but you know, yeah, I, can, I cannot tell that uh, we're not uh, a bit tired of, uh, of uh, expecting too long, you know. It's like, like, you know, we want, they want, but there is something in between which yeah. only the internal politics can explain. Well, look, I, we, we're not giving up, okay? We, 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 we will undergo huge reforms in Albania. Uh, we're doing it because we believe on, on, on such reforms. Yeah. All right. Minister Shazi, look, I, I appreciate your time. I, I know you've got to run off. Um, clearly, there's still a disillusionment there, but clearly you feel Albania is ready. Um, we, we wish you uh, the best in, uh, in the ongoing uh, discussions.
uh, with the Commission. Uh, Minister Shazi, thank you very much indeed. Uh, Minister Adrian Oros, um, um, if I could bring you into this, and, and I, I'd like a comment first. And and the 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 the, the, uh, the, the feelings of disillusionment or neglect uh, in the country. Um, is it fair what uh, the minister has said? Okay. I do, would like to thank you for the invitation and I would like to present some issues which we believe are of importance. In the context of COVID crisis, producers in the agri-food sector have suffered significant losses and uh, the absence of urgent measures to consolidate the sector. Many producers will go bankrupt, leaving the European market depend on the import of products below EU standards. The COVID crisis has once again demonstrated the importance of ensuring European food production and that the introduction of new requirements for farmers only weakens the European agri-food sector. It's necessary to increase the resistance of the food chain by ensuring the financial and economic stability of the actors in the entire food chain, but especially of the agricultural producer. It's also important to strengthen the capacity to cooperate and ensure consumer independence in times of crisis based on rules to eliminate wrongdoing and regional disparity and in the economy. Through appropriate mechanism and policy, including unfair competition from important products that do not meet the same standards. It's also, it's also important to develop short supply chains and local markets, which not only increase the aid value of agri-food products, but especially allow to reduce an environmental impact and reduce food waste. Hmm. In this way, the products of small producers can be valued, which is a priority direction to highlight to benefit the benefit of the short supply chain. In the other news, the computer management of agricultural activity, digitization, will change the model of agriculture from more efficient use of input, fertilizer, pesticide, drugs, animal feed, to use of autonomous equipment, robots, drones, agriculture, machinery, performance, phytosanitary and veterinary treatment, feed <coughs> system, or change it in the supply chain of the agri-food product. Yeah. Technology, efficient investment, and efficient management are the main vector for the development of a profitable agriculture and a sustainable rural economy. Also, innovation in agriculture promotes the concept of circular economy in agri-food management, replacing the linear economy, raw materials, technology, product consumption, waste storage, with the circular economy, raw materials, technology, product consumption, replacing rules. The role of innovation will therefore be extremely important in the coming period to increase the economic performance of farm, mm. to find new farm and collaboration between farmers and other actors, short chains, and to help community better adapt to the effect of climate change. Yeah, okay. Minister, if I could interrupt, thank you very much indeed for that. If I could interrupt, you mentioned climate, and, and indeed the, the, the minister from Germany mentioned the importance of dealing with the issue uh, of climate, especially for the sector uh, that you oversee. How much uh, the crisis has clearly been a catalyst for consensus, as I said, on climate, uh, on the budget, um, uh, among other things. How hopeful are you that that sort of progress, that that sort of consensus, uh, will continue and will indeed help 
uh, support the sector that you oversee, the agriculture sector? Okay, my colleague will translate the opinion. My is that the climate change can be changed only, but are irreversible. In my opinion, the climate changes can only be uh, stopped, but are irreversible. De aceea, cred că o agricultură durabilă, o agricultură responsabilă, în care să utilizăm resursele vitale, apa și pământul, este esențială. That is why I believe that a durable agriculture, a responsible agriculture, in which we use vital resources such as water and soil, is of is essential. Dar, în opinia mea, agricultura europeană, dacă accesează acest Green Deal, trebuie să aibă asigurată sustenabilitatea. But in my opinion, if European agriculture accesses Green Deal, has to ensure sustainability. Pentru că cu siguranță se va produce o hrană mai sănătoasă, dar mai scumpă. Because of, uh, for sure it will be produced um, a better, better food, but ex more expensive food. Și atunci cel mai mare pericol este ca fermierii europeni să falimenteze. And the, the biggest uh, danger is that European farmers go bankrupt. Pentru că există pericolul ca să intre pe piața europeană Because alimente. We face the danger that on the European market can enter uh, food products. Alimente din țări care nu își propun asemenea ținte ambițioase. Food products from countries that have no ambitious objectives. Și atunci cred că trebuie să fim foarte echilibrați în acest Green Deal și să avem grijă de sustenabilitatea fermierilor europeni. Thus, I believe we have to be very balanced and have um, uh, equilibrium in this uh, green deal and also uh, take care of the sustainability. Can I, may I interrupt very quickly uh, with a, with a follow-up question? I, I wonder, and I appreciate what the minister has said, I wonder if he feels uh, that the crisis has in a way revalidated a, a cohesive, coordinated approach to these issues, or, or if he thinks there is still way too much uh, um, way too many underlying rifts that clearly still exist among member states to move forward. Da. Uh, exact cum am spus. Exactly as I previously stated. Uh, noua paradigmă, Green Deal. The new Green Deal. Care ar trebui să... Uh, guverneze politica agricolă comună în următoarea perioadă. That should govern the common agricultural policy in the follow period. Uh, trebuie să dea șansă tuturor fermierilor. Has to give an opportunity to all farmers. De a, de a rămâne pe piață. To remain on the market. De a nu crea dis, discrepanțe mai mari. To not uh, create bigger differences between them. Iar ambițiile privind reducerea pesticidelor, reducerea antibioticelor și creșterea suprafeței de agricultură ecologică. And the ambitious uh, regarding the ambitions regarding uh, the raise of pesticides and the 
in a decrease of uh, and a raise of pesticides, antibiotics, and decrease of um, increase of uh, ecological surfaces. Yeah. Ar trebui, ar trebui um, să fie gestionate cu niște ecoscheme care să fie acceptate de către fermieri. Should be managed with eco schemes that shall be accepted by the farmers. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I had a, I had a, I had a, a couple of final questions, if I may, and 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 one of these relates very much to innovation and and and, and the way innovation can help agriculture. Uh, and I wonder to what extent innovation suffers in this environment, this low capex uh, environment. Are, are governments, minister, doing enough to prioritize and fund climate related research uh, and innovation that will ultimately benefit the agricultural sector? Da, și eu cred că inovarea, transferul tehnologic, digitalizarea au un rol foarte important în agricultură. I also believe that innovation, digital transfer and digitalization have an important role in agriculture. De asemenea, încurajăm cercetarea aplicată, cercetarea făcută de institutele de cercetare pentru fermieri pentru a rezolva probleme punctuale ale fermierilor. And we also support uh, applied research, the research which uh, our institutes um, do in order to solve our farmers problems. Și încercăm să stimulăm prin finanțare. And we intend to stimulate through funding oferind uh, finanțare mai mare sau punctaj mai mare celor care accesează Inovația și smart agriculture. Offering, uh, um, allowing better um, uh, funding to those that access smart agriculture and innovation um, models. Hmm. Very good. And, yeah, and, and just minister, if I may, to finish up with going back to the beginning where I started. Um, I think you heard the, the video messages from the other EU ministers. Um, messages of unity again of hope of of co cohesiveness of of solidarity um how optimistic minister do you feel sitting where you sit uh in 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 Romania having heard what the uh, uh the minister uh from Albania has said about accession how optimistic do you feel this is a a a block whose future is one of of solidarity and of unity and of coordination Da. Eu sunt optimist și cred că, cel puțin în domeniul nostru, în politica agricolă comună, I'm optimist and I believe that in our field, uh, as the common agricultural policy, vom uh, avea înțelepciunea we will have the wisdom ca în, uh, următoarele, în următoarea perioadă, în trialog, So that in the following trialogues, să ajungem la o arhitectură a agriculturii europene, to reach an European agriculture architecture, care să se dezvolte armonios, that will develop in harmony, cu grijă față de resurse și mediu, with care towards resources and environment, cu grijă față de producerea unei hrane sănătoase pentru consumatori europeani with care towards producing a healthy food for the european consumers dar în același timp cu o grijă pentru cel care muncește pământul față de fermier and at the same time with care towards the farmers that uh, are working the land trebuie să găsim un echilibru we have to find the balance între componenta ecologică, between the ecological component, între componenta socială care sunt foarte importante, and social component which are both very important, dar nu trebuie să uităm but componenta we, economică. But we do not have to forget about the economical component. Yeah. 
Yeah. Okay. Minister um, Oros, um, I, I want to thank you very much indeed uh, for your time uh, and your thoughts today. Uh, Adrian Oros, the Minister of Agriculture in uh, Romania. I, I thanks again to Edward Schalsi, the Minister of State for the Protection of Entrepreneurship in Albania, who had to leave us a short while ago. Um, um, my thanks to both of the ministers. My thanks to the uh, ministers who gave us the, uh, uh, the pre-recorded messages at the start. Uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed.